Hurricane Maria has joined the growing list of major hurricanes to impact the Caribbean and the U.S. in recent weeks. Hurricanes Harvey and Irma drew national headlines before Maria struck, and each storm brought devastation in the form of severe wind and dangerous flooding. For more on this, let's bring in Craig Setzer, Jeff Biradelli, and Scott Paget. Craig is chief meteorologist for our CBS station, WFOR in Miami. Jeff is the lead meteorologist for our affiliate WPEC in West Palm Beach. And Scott is chief meteorologist for our CBS station, KTVT in Dallas. Welcome to all of you. There is so much interest in this topic, as you all know. Uh, Craig, let me begin with you. Hurricane Maria is now the third major hurricane in less than a month, and two of them have impacted the same region. This is a question that continues to be raised. What do you think the role of climate change is playing in all of this? Well, you know, I mean, climate change may be a big background signal that is going on here, uh, but typically hurricanes track in terms of patterns where they're going to go. Climate change may be regulating the intensity. In other words, the Category 5s could be attributed to climate change, but, but the tracks and the way that they're going, they come in what we call multi-decadal cycles. If you look at uh, maps of hurricanes from the 20s, 30s, and 40s, it was like Florida was getting nailed just about every year, hmm. and then we had a break for a while from the late 50s through the 60s and 70s. Uh, Florida saw very few hurricanes. We may now be back in that pattern where we just see more of the storms that are out there. 2010 was a very active year, but all the storms were way out at sea. Nobody cared. Hmm, interesting. Well, Jeff, when people hear that a hurricane is, quote, rapidly intensifying, what is that describing? What phenomenon is taking place there? Well, that means it's it's really intensifying extremely quickly. There's a definition for that, and all of these storms, by the way, have met that definition. Uh, Irma met that definition. Harvey met that definition. Jose, for a time, met that definition, and Maria meets that definition. And so, you know, uh, the National Hurricane Center says that on average, only about 5% of storms do intensify rapidly. This year, at least over the past couple of weeks, we've seen it uh, occur a lot more often than that. Well, uh, Scott, let me ask you, um, when you talk about the strength of recent hurricanes in terms of wind speeds and storm surge, do we have to change what our standards for what storm conditions are quote unquote normal? I, we, we may have to change the standards. The, the National Hurricane Center has the categories for a reason, Saffir Simpson scale, that we've used for a number of years. So I, I think right now we're going to continue just to use the same thing, I think same scale, and I think that's a great scale to be able to use. However, as we're continuing to see these intensify just a bit more, it may be a conversation that we need to have into the future. I, I don't think any of us have had the idea of a Category 6 yet. However, we've just seen a lot of these very strong storms storms over the past couple of years. And as Craig was saying, it goes in cycles. So after this, we might have a cycle next year where everything calms down. So it's definitely something that we might need to research. But right now, I think the Saffir Simpson scale pretty much handles it. Um, and Jeff, after Irma leveled so many structures in the Caribbean and Florida, we heard a lot about the importance of building codes. Um, I want to pose this to both you and to Craig. What can be done to focus on making buildings at least somewhat resistant to severe weather? Well, uh, Hurricane Andrew changed everything here in South Florida. Before Andrew, building codes weren't as stringent. After Andrew, building codes are much better. And that does protect us. But to be honest with you, they need to be even better than they are right now, especially if we're going to see more intense hurricanes into the future. A lot of climate scientists are doing research right now. They say that perhaps there may be fewer storms in the future because of climate change. But those storms have more potential to be stronger and more intense. And so with a lot more people living close to the coastline, especially population distribution, we really need to make sure that we keep those codes stringent and probably tighten them up even more. Yeah, and Craig, let me ask you, because some folks have questioned, why even have that kind of population density in areas like the coastal sections of Florida, like the Keys, when you have that constant threat of hurricanes? Well, and that's really the question is, what risk are you willing to live with? Uh, it's a beautiful place to be here much of the year. The winter is fantastic here. But I think people that come to Florida, and up until last year, almost 40% of people hadn't been through a hurricane in Florida just because of the new growth and, mm -hmm. the, new, and the people coming into Florida. Uh, so, so people just need to realize there is a risk if you're going to live in Florida and near the coast. And there's a reason we call Florida the number one bowling pin in Hurricane Alley. And the building codes, Craig, tell me what your thoughts are on 
and trying to make some of these buildings perhaps a little bit more prepared to withstand hurricane force winds. Right. Well, after Andrew, as Jeff mentioned, uh, uh, South Florida, Miami-Dade said we've got to have tougher codes. Mm. We can't have things that happen in South Florida happen again. So they basically legislated it and said you cannot build a building unless it meets this code. Now, we see a higher frequency of strong hurricanes down here in South Florida, but areas along the coast that maybe see less frequent hurricanes but still see hurricanes, they need to up their codes so that they can... The whole point is you want to survive the storm. You don't want to lose everything. And if it costs more to upgrade your house and, and do that so you survive the storm, then, that, then so be it. Meanwhile, Scott, Hurricane Maria has knocked out power across Puerto Rico. Could this perhaps be a question about how power lines are constructed, whether they're above or below ground? It may be maybe too soon to talk about that for Puerto Rico. I know when I lived in South Florida down uh, with Greg and Jeff in that area, there were some communities down there that had their power lines underground, mm. hoping that they, if they had a hurricane come on shore or even some strong storms, they would, wouldn't have to deal with power lines going down. And they had power out again as Irma came on shore. Uh, so it's definitely, I think, an area to go towards because if they're underground, then maybe there will be less power outages. Of course, with Puerto Rico, they've been really dealing with uh, the power struggle and with the power companies there over the past couple of years. So yes, maybe a little too soon to talk about Puerto Rico, but I think that's definitely maybe a step in the right direction because after these storms come on shore, it is the power, it is the heat, it is people trying to get back to normal life. So I think that's something to look towards because some of those communities that actually have the power lines underground maybe are recovering just a bit faster. All right. Craig Setzer, Jeff Berardelli, and Scott Paget. thanks to you all. You're welcome. No problem. Thank you.